Okay, here we are inside of 3ds Max. So we're just going to basically go through the process of creating a base mesh inside of 3ds Max and then bringing that over into um, ZBrush. Oh, you know what? Create a pyramid, but I was thinking I want, I'll do a, a nice cylinder. Okay, so we're just gonna create kind of our base model that we'll be bringing over. Now this should be pretty much the same as we've done in previous weeks. So nothing too overly complicated in here. Um, let's see, where are you at, edge faces? All right, so the big thing would be when you're bringing over a model into ZBrush and begin working in ZBrush, you can start thinking of models and objects as pieces that you can add to your uh, sculpture. So it it's emulating kind of real world art. So you can actually start collecting a collection of shapes and models that you can add to various projects. So it's pretty cool. Um, the whole modeling process is totally really different than something like Max, where in Max you would have to think about the shape and the geometry and how to build it, all of those things. Inside of ZBrush, really we don't have to worry about almost any of that. You just have to worry about what the models look like and what it's supposed to look like at the end. So there's a lot of creative freedom. Um, so in here I've created a cylinder. I'm just going to add in a nice taper modifier here. and We'll just taper it down. I'm going to get really close. Now this is not of course the only way we can model these things. Remember in Max there's lots of options. We'll add a little bit of a bend to it. That's, that looks fun. And then I'm going to go ahead and convert this over to an edible poly so I can modify it even more. One thing I am going to do before I bring it over is I think I'm going to weld these vertices at the top. I was debating whether or not I wanted to, but we'll go ahead and weld some of them up. So at the top it goes to a nice point, and then I'm going to go ahead and manipulate my shape just a little bit more. So we'll see, we'll select all these at the bottom, scale tool, scale it out, we'll grab our move tool, we'll grab the rest of these and kind of pull them down. So basically I'm creating you know, a nice little witch hat sort of thing. Now we could keep modifying it in max, but we don't need to pretty much once we get our shape done and again it doesn't have to be perfect we're going to be making it and modifying it inside of zbrush anyway so i'm going to say that's pretty good um if i wanted to i might just want to inset the bottom here because if i'm making it into a full hat um that'll kind of save me a little bit of extra work i could even go one more in and then even move that up creating kind of our interior you know, if I wanted to, I could, of course, add like a shell modifier and have a whole interior, but that's going to be good enough. Again, I'm probably going to be putting this on someone's head, so I don't really need the whole interior. All right, then once we're done with it, we're just going to do export. If you have multiple objects in your scene, so if you modeled this hat and you modeled a pumpkin or something else, you might want to just do it selected if you only want to export one of them. I only want to export one of them, but I only have one, so export's fine. So I'm just going to save it to some place like my desktop. I'm going to save it as an OBJ file. OBJ is probably our most versatile 3D file. I didn't say best. I said versatile. Um, the FBX, which is the default, saves all kinds of awesome information, but it's not compatible with every 3D program, where our OBJ file pretty much is compatible with anything that takes 3D. So while it's not as fancy, it uh, you know it gets the job done. Save. Okay. If we want, we can also go to preset and choose ZBrush if we know we're going to be going over there, and it'll automatically adjust everything to work just right. If we didn't pick ZBrush, that'd be fine too. But when we import it, it might be laying on its side or flipped a funny way. So now we'll pop over to ZBrush. Okay. I'm going to go to import. And all we need to do is find our 
hat. Now, this is pretty common. When you're bringing a model from one program to another, it, the geometry itself may not be optimized for ZBrush. So that's the error I'm getting here. It says this mesh contains non-standard polygons, more than four sides. That's my fault. When I inset that bottom, that polygon, the very bottom one, is actually an n-gon at a weird shape. Uh, because we're going to be remodeling it and doing it all in ZBrush anyway, it's not going to be that big of a deal. But it's not doesn't it's not very good geometry, so it doesn't lend itself well for smoothing. Again, I can pick which one of these I want: quads and triangles, symmetrical triangles, old either. Again, for what we need, it doesn't really matter. In fact, there's some tools inside of ZBrush for fixing that anyway. Now I'm just going to click and drag to create it here. Now I'm in the full ZBrush, uh, so it's a little bit different, but it's basically the same as ZBrush Core. And I'm going to hit Edit. Okay. Now, cool. So if you notice, there's a weird kind of artifacting effect here. Sometimes, again, that's that 2D, 2.5D kind of element that ZBrush does. I'm just going to go ahead and do a new document. Click and drag and make that thing. Go back to edit mode. So again, it thought maybe I was trying to paint with the witch hats. Again, it does that sometimes. So here you can see we brought it in. Oh, look, I have some errors. That's from that weird end gone at the bottom. But ZBrush has wonderful tools for fixing it. So I'm just going to fix these holes real quick. So I'm going to go to Modify Topology underneath Geometry. Now there are lots and lots of rollouts in ZBrush. Um, you don't need to memorize them all. There are some tools that I use all the time, and there are many tools that I haven't used. I was going to say barely used, but there are definitely tools I haven't used even. And here I could do something like go underneath Modify Topology, and we can just simply click Close Holes. And look, it'll fix it right up. Now if we wanted to make this mesh even more uh, ZBrush friendly, we could do that using some of the tools that I mentioned in the intro video. So again, some of the awesome tools inside of ZBrush include Z Remesher. So let me click this thing. And basically it's going to completely remesh my geometry and turn it into something that's going to smooth a little bit easier. Now if I don't like it, I can always hit Control Z and go back. So we can try just dividing it. Notice it kind of jumped up and shrunk when I divided it. Again, Control Z, we'll do Z Remesher. Now, if I divide it, it's just going to go a little smooth. So again, once we've done Z Remesher, this is a completely different mesh than the one we brought in. It just happens to look just like it, right? But now we have access to all of our wonderful sculpt tools. If I turn on X, I can have symmetry turned on, and I can go back, hold down Shift, and maybe smooth out these weird kind of edges it's building. You know, maybe I don't like those so much. Again, I'm just kind of smoothing them out. Again, with that symmetry, it's nice because it'll do one thing same as the other. Um, but now we can really start changing the geometry. Underneath the Geometry tab is where most of our tools are going to be for editing the mesh. So you can see here I can change the number of subdivisions. So that kind of adds and changes the complexity. Oh, don't really care for that too much. Again, I can subdivide it again and again, or as many times as I want to kind of get that shape. Um, so for this, I can just start using my brush tools. Last week, you should have had a chance to kind of jump in and start using these. You can see there are a lot. In fact, I would say pretty much every version of ZBrush has been adding more tools. Um, there are some really cool specialty tools that do some really neat things, but are very particular to certain tasks. And then there are tools like our standard brush, clay, clay buildup, layer. Um, I use the move brush probably the most, which is odd that it doesn't default it at the top. Um, this is probably definitely my favorite brush. Um, as well as slash three, I use a ton. Rake I like to use. Um, Flatten is the one I really like as well. Uh, as you play inside of ZBrush, you'll probably find tools that you really like. Again, I find Move to be one of the most handy because it allows me to basically push and pull on my model. Right? Now I don't want that.
want that necessarily, but I can also hold down Control. Oh, I hid my model instead of masked it. So I can hold down Control and mask out parts. Here for right now. And even do things like scale, move, rotate, and all kinds of fun things. So it does look like I maybe missed a pixel or so there, but that's okay. Here. Again, I'm just using the masking tool. Oh, if I want to invert that, I'll hit Control and click. Just invert my mask. Kind of move it around. So you can see I'm kind of trying to create that sort of floppy hat witch look. Now I could absolutely have made this model all inside of ZBrush, you know. Um, but I want you to see that you can use a program like Max. Here, let's just smooth it out a bit. Especially on the front edge. To create our models. So I can start, if I wanted to, maybe adding some more detail. Some more folds and stuff. Start looks, kind of looks like the sorting hat there those eye kind of shapes so you can see I'm just kind of using the move tool to push and pull it like clay like I said this is probably one of my favorite tools I can't think of a project I've done or I probably didn't use move at some point might be able to find some that I've done that only used move Again, I could use slash or something to kind of help with these folds. Also, I don't really have a picture I'm going off of. So that's something else that might be more helpful too. If I were to work from an actual picture of a nice hat, I'd be able to get kind of how these fold lines would lay down a little bit more realistically. I'm just kind of making it up as a go right now. That's okay too, right? You know, sometimes we don't need to go for realism. Maybe I'm making this for a video game and I want it to be a little stylized or more whimsical. So you can just see just by simply pushing and pulling and making some adjustments, we can kind of create a fun look. Now, of course, the modeling part inside of ZBrush can take as long as you might want it to. I'm gonna smooth it back out. All right, we can kind of see now. I'm going to use some of the other tools inside of ZBrush to make a fun detail real quick before I call it a day. I'm going to, again, I'm going to use the mask tool. I'm just trying to get a nice stripe here. Then you can see it's a little choppy looking. That's because my model's a little low res. So if I just hit subdivide maybe a couple more times. Active points is up here at 1.9 million. So a lot of polygons now, but that allows me to have some pretty smooth edges. So that'll work good enough. Now I'm gonna go to Subtool. Subtool will show you where all your other parts are. So if you have more than one part to it, um, you can go into Subtool and access them. Right now we don't have more than one part, but I'm gonna add one more part before I finish this video. And I'm just going to come down here to Extract and click Extract and Accept. And you can see now it's created this new model, which is basically a ring. I can. Uh, it will keep it masked. I'll go ahead and deselect it by hitting control and just drawing a selection box. You can see there it is. Now it looks a little low res because of those edges and stuff. Here again we could go back and use that fun Z remesher tool. Maybe clean it up a bit. Mm, still a little ragged. 
Maybe we can try DynaMesh. Yeah, which means a lot lower resolution. There we go. Maybe we'll do Z Remesh now. Let's see. Okay. You know, again, I got some. We'll just smooth it out a bit. You can see it kind of j jumping around on me. I'm just holding on Shift and snapping to different places. Here, if I want to make this a little longer again, again we can just kind of use these tools. And we'll even scale it a little. Again, it looks a little funky in the middle, but we hit this with a nice smooth. Get rid of that weird edge I just created. All right, now we start kind of getting our shape. Now I could keep playing with this as much as I want until we're happy. Um, maybe I'll even in, inflate the brim a little bit. Grab that. Adding a little bit of fun detailing here. Go back and smooth it back out. I feel like it's a little bit too much. I could always use flatten, again, one of my favorites, and maybe flatten it back out. Now, the hat I'm kind of making, I kind of want to have that sort of floppy look. So it's okay if it's not entirely consistent. But we could keep reworking this and playing with it until we're happy. Um, you know, that's kind of what the modeling is all about. So we all pull that out a little more. Pull that out. Etc. Alright. So hopefully that was helpful. You can again you can do this with any kind of model. I have an older video below where I did a pair of glasses and kind of added it to another mo a model with a hat. Um, but we could just keep working this inside of ZBrush and adding details if we want from here on out. But um, again, I want you to see that you can use both programs together very efficiently to make some really cool stuff. Um, so hopefully you guys are going to have fun making things.